Welcome to Vogel Timeline, our quarterly news report keeping you up to date on the latest happenings here at the Vogel 3 and 4 site near Augusta, Georgia. The summer was busier than ever here at the site. With more than 5,000 personnel on site, many new milestones have been accomplished. The cooling tower for Unit 3 is about two-thirds complete, currently rising to more than 450 feet. When completed, it will reach 601 feet, which will be almost 50 feet taller than the cooling towers for Vogel Units 1 and 2. Ongoing activities in the Unit 3 nuclear island are paving the way for key milestones to come. Reinforcing steel installation and concrete placements are required both inside and outside of the containment vessel bottom head, or CVBH, to reach the major milestone of concrete at ground level, typically referred to as elevation 100 feet. The safety-related concrete placed under the Unit 3 CVBH has now reached more than 80 feet and is expected to reach the 100-foot mark in the next few months. All containment vessel fabrication and assembly is on schedule. The Unit 3 lower ring was set into the nuclear island weighing more than 950 tons and rising more than 51 feet high. The lower ring is the second of five modular components that will comprise the AP-1000 containment vessel. In yet another major lift, the CA-05 wall module, made up of steel plates and concrete, was placed into the Unit 3 nuclear island recently to form separate rooms inside the containment vessel. And work is well underway on the foundation for the Unit 3 Annex building, which will include functions such as the health physics area, the control support area, access control, and personnel facilities. Things are really starting to take shape around here, and it's easier to envision what the completed structures will look like. On the operations side, operators are training on the digital control system software known as Ovation and its implementation for Vogel 3 and 4 using the Integrated Maintenance Training System, or IMTS. Leading this vital training effort is Dan Cody, Senior Nuclear Plan Instructor. Well, the types of systems essentially that we're, we are training on primarily is for the instrument control technicians. And what you see behind me are the process trainers that the instrument control technicians would be using to learn their craft or their, their basic skills, if you would. What makes these process trainers unique, everything that's located or situated on these trainers are microprocessor based for the most part with the AP-1000. Uh, it's a digital world and, and so the instruments and the devices that we have on these trainers are capable of communicating digitally as well as analog to the control systems that we're going to have in place. Ovation is actually proven technology. It's been around the power plant industry for many, many years. It's proven its reliability and safety. And what Ovation actually will do for us in this plant is allow the operators to control the, the plant from a desktop. They'll be able to actually sit, control it at the click of a mouse. It's gonna allow them to see a lot more information, a lot more of the processes that are going on on the field in a very condensed and a very concise manner. For an INC technician to come in from the field or once they get hired in, it's essentially about a three year program from the time they come in to the time they essentially graduate with the qualifications that they need to maintain the plant as instrument control technicians. Thanks, Dan, for showing us around the operations side of things. In the last issue of Vogel Timeline, we featured the detailed Vogel Construction Monitoring Report, or VCM process, and the team that makes that happen. In August, the 11th VCM report was filed with the Georgia Public Service Commission detailing where we stand on the Vogel 3 and 4 project. The good news is no changes were made to the overall projected cost or in-service dates for Units 3 and 4. Our co-owners continue to play a key role in making the Vogel 3 and 4 project such a success. In our last issue, we profiled Oglethorpe Power. This time, we'd like to highlight another of our co-owners, the Municipal Electric Authority of Georgia, or MEAG. MEAG was founded in 1975 as a public power entity, initially including 47 Georgia communities. 
Today, MEAG is comprised of 49 communities and partners with Georgia Power for a stake in coal-fired plants Wansley and Shearer and nuclear plants Hatch and Vogel. Here to tell us more about MEAG and the Vogel partnership is Jim Fuller, Senior Vice President and Chief Financial Officer. MEAG is excited about Vogel 3 and 4. We've got a mission to provide uh, reliable and cost competitive energy uh, to our participant cities. We like Vogel 3 and 4. It's uh, low cost, low emissions, and that's especially important given the EPA's new guidelines on uh, CO2 emissions. So it's a very important project to us. You know, we have a very good working relationship with Georgia Power. We've worked with them on existing uh, plants for over 35 years. The Vogel 3 and 4 expansion is a very complicated effort with many moving parts and many decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. We're pleased with the level of uh, information exchanged with the co-owners. You know, looking forward, we're looking at a very successful endeavor first new nuclear in the United States in over 30 years. Thanks, Jim, for that insight into our important partnership with MEAG. Just up the road from Plant Vogel is the Westinghouse Nuclear Fuel Facility located in Columbia, South Carolina. More than 51,000 nuclear fuel assemblies have been produced at this site for worldwide distribution. The fuel rods that will power the AP-1000 reactors here at Vogel 3 and 4 will be manufactured at the Columbia facility and loaded into Unit 3 in 2017 and Unit 4 in 2018. With more on the story, here's Dave Pratt. Westinghouse has a long relationship and tight relationship with Georgia Power and Southern Company. We've done much together. Westing These are Westinghouse-style reactors, Vogel 1 and 2. We in Columbia have made the fuel from the very beginning and uh, we continue to work together to improve our, our performance and the performance of the reactors. Uh, process make nuclear fuels very interesting and, and many people when they come here are surprised to see, see what we do and how we do it. We've had some people come in and said, gee, I thought you had one big machine that took uranium and fuel came out the other end. But it's a very complicated process where we start with a chemical process. So we take uranium delivered from the customer and we convert that uh, to powder. So we have a process, the, the material comes in a slurry form, we'll heat it up uh, in, into a liquid and gas state and then uh, precipitate, separate, dry it out and make powder. Once we have the powder, we'll blend it to the specific enrichment for the customer and then we'll make, press that into pellets. We have a ceramic process, so we'll center pellets almost 1800 degrees C uh, a centering process and from the pellets then we'll load those into fuel tubes and make fuel rods and the rods will be ready for building the fuel assemblies. The other part of the plant then we have the components that go with the assemblies so we get parts from suppliers to assemble grids so we have grid straps that will assemble into grids. Uh, we uh, assemble nozzles we'll take those and, and put those together in what we call skeletons which are the backbone of the fuel assembly and then the rods and the skeletons get married up in our final assembly area to make a fuel assembly that many people have seen and that'll get packaged and then shipped ultimately to the, the end user. I personally have very high hopes for the nuclear industry in the future. The, uh, the, this country in particular needs a good stable source of clean energy and I think more and more people are recognizing that nuclear is that source. It's the only practical source that we have today for that too. So I, I really look forward for the growth. I think once, I appreciate very much Vogel being the first one, I think when Vogel gets online, uh, that'll open the door to uh, a lot more growth in the nuclear industry and nuclear power for this country, which this country really does need. Well, that's all we have time for today. Thanks for joining us on this exciting journey as we bring plans to reality. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you next time for more great stories here on the Vogel Timeline Report.